In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst, he was and is and never shall be. Uh, we saw in chapter 1 of Paul's letter to the uh, Hebrews that Christ is superior to the angels. He is superior in that he created the ages. He is superior in that he laid the foundations. He is superior in that he is seated on the throne with the Father and is God himself, whereas angels are merely ministering spirits to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. We saw then that the Old Covenant was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator and that the Jewish Christians here had an unseemly reverence for the angels, for the cult of angels, because of their uh, uh, the Jewish worship cult. And they were tempted to go back to the Jewish form of worship. And Paul exhorts them that if people disobeyed the old covenant, they were punished much more if people disobey the new covenant will they be punished particularly since this new covenant is spoken not by angels but by the son of god himself and then secondly the punishment will be greater because this message is confirmed by signs and wonders you see the gospel itself was confirmed by the signs that followed the gospel. It eveveothi, it made certain, veveos, gave certainty or validity to the new message. We read about these signs in the gospel of Mark in the last chapter, in the disputed ending of Mark. And so I read in verse 17, Simia de tis pistev sasi, tafta paracoluthisi, and to anomatimu vemonia valusi. And these signs shall follow them that believe, and my name shall they cast out demons. Glosis la lisusi canes, they shall speak with new tongues. Um, Acts chapter 2, right? They spoke with new tongues. Um, Ophi sarusi they shall take up serpents. Well, Acts chapter 28. Paul picked up a serpent and was not hurt. Kanthana simon ti piosin. They shall drink a deadly thing. Umi aftus vlapsi, and it shall not hurt them. Epiarostus hiras epithisusi, kekalos exusin. They shall lay their hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Um, Acts chapter 9 and 10, right? You see uh, P uh, Peter going into uh, Dorcas and uh, Tabitha, and, and he heals her. Um, so, Paul cast out devils. The apostles spoke with new tongues. Paul picked up literal serpents. Paul, uh, Peter laid his hands on Tabitha, etc., Paul raised a dead man. You see that in um, Acts 20, right? He's preaching and Eutychus is, falls down and is taken up dead. And Paul uh, lays himself on him and he revives. Now let me give in a... Uh, so the exegetical purpose of this text is, in other words, the context is, this is warning us that we have no excuse if we neglect the gospel because God proved it to us by the signs which followed. The signs proved the message. Now, practically, this brings up some questions, so we'll have, I'll have an excursus. Uh, let's address the common idea among Protestants that the gifts of the Holy Spirit have ceased. This is called a uh, cessationist op opinion. 
they believe that the gifts ceased with the apostles, and that is why Paul, at the end of his ministry, could no longer heal. And so they say in 2 Timothy chapter 4, that trophy, when Paul says, Trophimus, have I left it, my lead him sick, it was because he no longer had that uh, gift, that apostolic gift of healing and the confirmatory signs of the gospel. However, in the Orthodox Church, we believe that the Holy Spirit has never ceased to distribute these gifts. And so many saints have been blessed with miraculous gifts. And all you have to do is open up what's called the Menaean, or the monthly calendar book, uh, with the hagiography, or the lives of the Agii, of the saints, and read what God has done through those saints. As we say in our liturgy, God is wondrous in his saints. Now, we need to remember two paramount truths when we come to gifts and uh, miraculous signs. The first is this, and, and this is one that we all need to lay hold of. Paul says, though I speak with the tongues of angels and of men and have not charity, I am nothing. Why? Now abide faith, hope, and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest proof is love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one toward another. John uh, um, 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. But let us remember that love certifies that we are of the truth. These miraculous gifts confirm the veracity of the church. But the church has understood false signs exist as well. So the first thing that I want us to point out and hold to heart is that the gift of love is the best and most supernatural gift that could be given to us. But these gifts do continue in the church, these lesser gifts. The second thing we need to remember is that false signs and wonders exist. Let me repeat that. False signs and wonders exist, and they are allowed to be performed in order to prove our hearts if we will receive the real truth. The Lord indicates signs and wonders will continue. Um, but it's not necessarily by true shepherds. The shepherds say at the judgment, Lord, have we not wrought miracles in your name and in your name have cast out devils, Matthew 7. Many do work these miracles. But the greatest miracle, which is the seal of our ownership, is the gift of love. The evil one will allow false prophets to work, lying signs and wonders to deceive the elect. Our Lord said, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show signs and wonders to deceive, if it were possible, the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Um, he did not say they were fake news. He didn't say they did not actually perform the miracles. They did. And God allows them to try us. When we see the last day approaching, there will be an increase of signs and wonders, false signs and wonders. Um, we do not often speak of this in the church, but our Lord gave us plenty of warning and warned us of the, the beast to come. Forgive me for readjusting this. I'm getting new hardware for my um, recording. Let me read this section from Revelation 13. He says, And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and he doeth great wonders, 
so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, remember, when this occurs, this is going to literally happen, this beast or whatever, this demonic um, false Christ will do lying signs and wonders and call fire down from heaven, right? Elijah did that. Well, Moses and Elias, or Enoch and Elias, depending on which father is speaking. Anyways, either, either Moses and Elijah or Enoch and Elijah will return at the second before the second coming, and they will call fire down from heaven. And in fact, the scripture says in Revelation chapter 11, these are the two olive stands standing before the, whole, the God of the whole earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours them. And if any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Um, and of course, we know that when they finish their testimony, the scripture says, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall slay them and their bodies, their dead bodies shall lay three days in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And then they're going to ascend up into heaven before all their enemies and God's wrath will ultimately be poured out. Orthodoxy as the true church has always had miracles attendant to its good news. The evil one is allowed with these false groups to do the same to try our hearts. Uh, read Deuteronomy chapter 18. In the end, ultimately, the evil one will be allowed to do miracles to affirm to the world that he is their savior and should be worshipped since he wrought these miracles and resurrected the beast. Let us remember then that these gifts continue in the church. Secondly, the greatest gift is love. And that is what proves whether we are his, not whether or not we cast devils in his name. Remember, John the Baptist, the greatest among men, did no miracle. Miracles are not necessarily a sign of sanctity. Um, and then thirdly, remember that the evil one will do signs and wonders to distract us and to deceive us. And so ultimately, we need to rest with the faith that was once delivered to the saints, Jude 3 and 4. Let us recognize the evil one will work signs and wonders to deceive even the elect, and let us not be led away with their error. May God bless us and keep us, and may we always believe the gospel which has been attended by miracles and signs and wonders following. Amen.